wheelchair width? 18. 18 inches. What is a standard wheelchair width from wheel to wheel? 26. 26. What if you add two inches and you have a 20, 20 inch wheelchair width? 28. So that's going to be up to 28, right? So what's the minimum that you can use on a door? 30. Uh, what is a narrow adult wheelchair seat width? 16. What's a standard seat height? 19 and a half. 19 and a half. What is a low seat seat height? 16. Uh, 17. 17 and a half. 18. Um, I'm going to just assume that y'all know 2 point, 3 point, 4 point gates and that you know swing to and swing through and that you know um, what else do you know about that? Stair sequencing and going up and down. Everybody knows those, right? What I think the question, though, is worded weird because, like, or maybe it was Kendall's test, I don't remember, but one of them, so I thought that when you go down, you do the crutches first, and then the unaffected, and then the good, right? Uh -huh. Well, I guess the way the question was worded, it, like, put it all together, and it didn't specify that you do crutches, and then the unaffected. Yeah. Yes, sir. that's what she said. But remember, your assistive device has to go down with the affected leg. So if you do it at the same time, it's okay. But safety-wise, you're going to do stair, uh, the crutches, and then the bad leg and the good leg. Okay. You're not going to put the bad leg down there and start that transfer and then move the crutches. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it was the way the word, the question was worded. But I think that was Kendall's test anyway. <laughs> Oh, but when you're okay, so and there was another one on Kindle test. It was saying um, his leg has to go first, like so when you first start walking. Oh yeah, and, for a four point, wasn't it? Yeah. Does it matter? Yes, I didn't think that mattered. It was. Like, it won't matter because the, it's a balance yeah. issue and not an affected leg issue. Yeah. But with an orthopedic patient, what leg always goes first? Yeah. Yeah. The, the affected leg. Also, the hurt one goes. Yeah, the hurt. So the hurt one will always hit front. Right. Seventeen was a short hand. Yes. If they can step through, it's always bad leg, good leg, whatever. Bad leg, good leg. Assistive device, bad leg, good leg. Okay. So it always goes first. And but on a curve, you would do the strong leg first. No. Well, yes, coming up, yes, you would. Yeah, but just to do a normal gait pattern, the bad leg goes out front. Okay. Oh, Ms. Okay. I have uh, different notes on the total knee, hip, and the ORIF. What is the weight-bearing status? Okay, a total hip and a total knee patient are weight-bearing is tolerated. And then the ORIF is normally non-weight-bearing or punch-down weight-bearing. Because you're worried about messing up that. Um, our, Does that just like depend on the doctor? Because in my clinic, there was like a lot of knee patients that was no weight bearing at first. It does depend on the doc daughter. Oh, good doctor. Uh, what I would tell you is if they put weight on that, it's not going to hurt it. Uh, they're not going to hurt the surgery. But there's there was an article put out about eight or nine years ago, maybe 10, that the bone heals better if you don't bear weight on it, that it heals quicker in those two instances on a total knee and a total hip. Uh, the other thing is sometimes they don't do concrete, they don't do the cementing, concrete, the cementing in there. And in that instance, you don't do as much weight bearing. So most of them are cemented. It's rare they don't do that anymore. So maybe it was that doctor. Um, you were aware, let me think. Calanina, that would be C. Smith doing a total knee and he did non-weight bearing. I don't know why he's doing that. I'd have to find out. I always get way very tolerated on this. Uh, if you want to know where I am, uh -uh. well, I'll call to get an answer. Yes, sir. Did you ever contact Dolly? I did not. I will do. I'm sorry. Okay, any other questions?
questions on those? What do you, you had an O R I F at the ankle? What do you think the weight bearing status is going to be? Non weight -bearing. bearing, probably. And then move into touchdown later. Do we ever do toe touch weight bearing? No. No toe touch weight bearing. Ever. Even if the doctor orders it. But sometimes they still do. What is a. What is a. Bronco dilator do to heart rate increase. Increase. increases. If you ever have one, you know. Um, remember, you need to know your postural drainage positions. Go back and review that. What are the three diseases of COPD? Emphysema, asthma, and chronic bronchitis. Good. What is tidal volume? Out. Normal breathing in and out. Normal breathing in and out. If you're just sitting here. Um, what is the workout rate that you have people work at at the board scale? 11. 11. What does that relate to? Heart rate. Heart rate. Normally, not always, but it should relate to about heart rate. What do you ask? It says light to the heart. Pardon? Light to the heart. Light. Light. Yes. So, so uh, let's see. Like, All I can hear like is hard. Kendall what's screaming. It, somewhat hard. hard. <laughs> somewhat hard. Yeah. Somewhat hard. Somewhat hard. Somewhat hard. <laughs> what is eupnea? E U P N E A. Normal breathing. What is anoxia? Lack of oxygen. Lack of oxygen. What is clubbing? Fingers. And what's that mean? Not enough oxygen. What's an aneurysm? Blood it's bleeding. It's no, wait, it's a bursting. Yeah, it's bursting. It's a weakness in the wall. What is expiratory reserve volume? What else you can breathe out after you emptied your lungs? Is that right? At which you can breathe out when? So uh, you've already breathed out normally, but you push out more. Okay, good, good. That is expiratory reserve volume. So you, you've done your tidal volume, but what you can push out after that. Do you still have uh, air in your lungs at that point? No. Yeah, you do. Oh. You always have, always have some air down there. Um, what is diaphoresis? Profuse sweating. Oh. Profuse sweating. What happens with uh, a beta blocker? Increased heart rate and blood pressure. All right. Decrease. decrease. You have a decrease. I was heart rate thinking of. Blood so you're right? looking at the heart rate. There's what one happens one. with uh, what is on the angina scale? Where do you stop having them? Where do you have them stop? Two plus. Two plus. On the shortness of breath scale, where you have them stop? Three plus. Three plus. Good. What's the normal hemoglobin for a male? 14. 14 to 18. 18. What's the female? 13 to 16. I, I'm working with a little lady, and hers running at about 8.4, and it's dropping. What do you think happened to her? <laughs> she's what? I hope she's not dying. She's the sweetest little thing you've ever seen. That's like days ago. Seven's. Seven's. She, she's already had two blood transfusions when she was in the hospital three weeks ago. Guess what? She's on three blood thinners. She's bleeding from the blood thinners, is my guess. So she's having to go back and talk to the doctor that took her on those. Blood thinners are. I don't know why she's on three, but I hope it's all from the same doctor. But I'm guessing she's bleeding because of the blood thinners. But I'm not a doctor, so I can't fix her. But that's when you, she's, she also has AFib, so she needs to be on something, but anyway, she can't tolerate the bleeding like that. That's a lot of bleeding out when you're dropping that fast. That's a lot. Uh, what's normal for sodium? 135 to 145. When do you get concerned about sodium? Below 
Less than 125 and greater than 150. What is the normal glucose level? 70 to 110. When do we get concerned? Well, 300. Greater than 300. What is brady apnea? What it was brady apnea? B R A D Y T N E A. Brady apnea. What is it? Slow breathing. What is peripheral edema? Swelling in the periphery. What is a CP? Abdomen swelling. Swelling in the abdomen. What is hepatomegaly? What is pallor? P A L L O R. White. Should, pale, right. Should you do isometrics with heart failure patients? No. Probably not. Do they hold their breath up? That's what I'll. That's, okay. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to ask you that question. But if you. Uh, like if you were teaching them to not hold their breath, could you still do it? Um, you or could, you but you just monitor them. Yeah. Um, we'll see. What's the cause of multiple sclerosis? Viral. Viral. What are the defining factors for fibromyalgia? Widespread pain. For how many months? Three. Three. How many tender points? 18, good. And what else? One more. Substance P changes? Yeah, substance P change in levels of substance P in the spinal cord fluid. What is charcot foot? Breaking down of the bone. Where at? Yeah. 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 Charcot foot. What disease does it go with? Diabetes. Diabetes. Do you always do what the doctor tells you, weight bearing wise? Yes. Yes. Do you ever? Uh, is toe touch. <laughs> you don't do toe touch, and what you're going to do is educate him if he pushes it. You're going to educate him, and you're going to say, "My teacher had two little old ladies one summer who both could not extend their ankle and do dorsiflexion because they developed an Achilles contracture." And that does happen, a shortening there, and then it causes, and when they're walking on their toe, have you ever tried walking on your toe very far? It will mess up your leg, it makes your back hurt, messes up your hip, that's all kinds of things. Not a good thing. Better for them to be non-weight bearing than toe touch. What's the first thing you check in hand rehab? What are you always going to do first with them? What you say? Sensitivity. Sensation. Hypersensitivity. And you don't work them if they're inflamed. Good, that's true. That's true. Don't work them if they're inflamed. How long on a walker, usually for a total hip or a total knee, for an ORAF hip fracture? Six weeks. Usually six weeks. So they're going to be on the walker usually six weeks, unless a doctor lets them off. Sometimes they'll come back on a cane. I've seen they're doing them in younger, younger people, and so I'm seeing younger people. Why? Why do they make them stay on a walker? So you can so they, they can walk without one. So they don't fall. Yeah, the only way they can screw up a hip or a knee is fall, and they do. Nothing like them having to go back in for surgery because they fell on their hip or their knee, because it does not do well usually. What are the three long-term residuals in a guillain barre patient? Weak periods. Good. Weak quads. Weak quads and weak glutes. glutes. And one more. Uh, weak hand intrinsics. Yeah, weak hand and foot intrinsics. <laughs> what are intrinsics? Uh, the your fine motor stuff. Fine motor stuff in your hand. Owner nerves. The older nerve does, yes, does the interrupt the eye. Good for you. <laughs> does ALS start distally or proximally? Distally. Distally.
hopefully, what's the lifespan for an ALS patient usually? Three to five. Three to five years. What's Charcot's triad? What disease does it go with? MS. MS, what are they? Nystagmus. Nystagmus. Scanning, Scanning speech. speech. Intention tremor. Good. With Parkinson's disease, do you have an intention tremor or a resting tremor? Resting. What are the other two major things that go with Parkinson's disease? Shuffling gait. What? Shuffling gait. Lesturing gait. And what do you call it? Did you call it that? I called it shuffling gait. Is that what it is? Is that festering gait? Would be probably what you'll see it with. Festering. Festering. Like festering. Like festering. So. But shuffling is for, I mean, is what it is. Oh, okay. I'm just saying if you see festering, now that's what I mean. And um, what else? Resting tremor, festering gait. Spasticity? Uh, not really spasticity, more like um, it's called rigidity in them. <coughs> so rigidity and then brachykinesis. Okay, guys, I'm done with you.